starts right now. Good morning. It is Friday, October 6th. David, yes, we were so blessed with that Lots inch and a half at the airport that was measured. You got how much at your airport? Yeah, about an inch and a half, just a smidge below an inch and a half out north of the lake. And a lot of people got a little bit more. Somebody got a little bit less, but it seems like everybody got just about a little bit. And everyone and thing, so. needed that rain because... Because? Because what does your grass look like right now? Actually, there's some green patches in my yard, but just because you got green doesn't mean your grass is going to grow. I hate, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but some of y'all just got some dead grass. So this is the number one trending story on KSAT.com. It says, don't be watering a dead lawn. That's according to our horticultural expert, Mr. David Rodriguez, who we've interviewed and he's planted with me in the garden. He's with the Tex A&M AgriLife Extension Service. So he explains, David, Okay. How do you know if your grass is dead or dormant? It's brown and it ain't growing. Okay, so your... Or, or, or your yard is just dirt. Right, so I have just dirt. David... So you don't have any grass. Nothing. I don't have any grass. You got nothing. I just, I didn't do anything. Okay. So the answer is, according to, to our horticulturist, Bermuda grass is mm -hmm. basically... The only one that can come back, if you have Augustine or another, and Bermuda is uh, the only one that can, but that's if you took care of it. Did you take Well, I took care of I have Zoiza. Oh. Or Zoiza, or however, it however says you say it. says that one's not coming back. Uh, mine's coming back. Oh, it's coming back. I took care of it. But you took care of it. I, I fertilize. So basically, if you took care See? of your grass, um, it's good. you're good. But if you didn't, like I didn't, I did not want to water. It was just a lose-lose battle. My backyard, I didn't yeah. water. That's probably not coming back. Only thing that's gonna be coming back, they say, are weeds. So what do you do weeds. if you want to bring your lawn back to life if it's brown and crunchy? You go to a lawn store and buy some some squares of yard and <laughs> put some dirt you, down and plant it. You buy some you buy some more sod. Or so okay, so basically so what do you do? Fertilize with organic, natural organic uh -oh. based lawn fertilizer. And if you go on KSAT.com, they get into the nitty gritty of exactly how much you need for how many square feet. Um, and it, they show you how to do it. We have all this explained on our website. And just because it rained yesterday doesn't mean the aquifer shot up to where you can start watering all the time. And I know yeah. like lakes are still down, Canyon's still gonna be down, and Medina's still a puddle. So just because <laughs> we got a little water yesterday doesn't mean that uh, things are, are hunky-dory because they're not yet. I'm just hoping. We still have some ways to go. Right? That's so, right. Yeah, have we had an aquifer reading yet? We'll get it in a little bit. We'll okay. have it on the noon show. Okay, so yes. let's see how, I bet uh, it went up. But Why? you can see right now, I mean, it looks a lot different outside right now compared to where we were 24 hours ago. This time yesterday, we were dealing with those rounds of showers and thunderstorms pushing across South Central Texas as we saw the front make its way through the area as well. Now, today, it's still going to be somewhat warm. Okay? Okay, highs are still going to climb into the 80s. It's not until we head into the weekend that we're going to see a secondary push of cooler air move in for Saturday and Sunday. And those highs may only top off in the 70s here in San Antonio. Speaking of which, 70s, that's where we are right now. 73 degrees over at SA International, just a degree warmer up in New Braunfels. In the 60s, though, for places like Bernie, stretching over to Kerrville, a nice start to the day. We do have a little bit of the humidity present because of that rain and some saturated soil. You can see throughout the remainder of this Friday, yes, a mix of sun and clouds expected. 83 degrees by 2 p.m., a high around 86, somewhat seasonable for this time of year. Winds out of the north northeast. It will be a bit breezy at times, 10 to 15, gusting upwards of 20 miles per hour. Dew points are going to start to drop by late afternoon and into the evening. That is good if you're stepping out for any Friday evening plans or area football games. This weekend, there's that fall forecast. Highs in the 70s, a few mornings in the upper 50s expected as early as Sunday morning. Enjoy it because next week we are expecting a warming trend to take back over ahead of maybe another front that could move in ahead of the following weekend. We'll time it out, get you all the details, plus a recap of some of those rainfall totals we saw yesterday in just a few. Sounds amazing. Thank you, Mia. Let's take a look outside of the roads. Uh, 37 Alamo Dome. I love that shop, by the way. It's my favorite shop. But looks like, you know, this. there's always a backup here. 410 in San Pedro right in front of North Star. And it looks like we have a backup at 37 and Jones Avenue. If these are in your routes or commutes this morning, take note. 
other than those little backups, a lot of good news today. Good weather, rain, cold temperatures, traffic moving. And if you are going to go fill up today, guess what? What? More good news. Gas prices down in San Antonio and all over the state. AAA says it's because of a drop in consumer demand. They say the average price for a gallon of regular unleaded fuel decreased the past week. Just in a week, it went from 331 down to 320. Mm -hmm. 11 cent drop. That's the average here in San Antonio. Texas, the price that came, comes around is uh, 338 all the way down to 330. So the entire state's dropped at least eight cents. We've got all the details on KSET.com. I saw some down the street for like 315. Really? Yeah. Oh, the Circle Can McCullough, that one? Is that, is that, is that the one? Yeah. Yeah. I got 315. See his mother for 315. I'll take it. Need it. Here's today's 9 at 9. The battle over the border continues. President Joe Biden says his administration has no choice but to build about 20 miles more on a southern border wall. Biden, who made a campaign promise to not add the wall, says he tried and failed to redirect funds that were already established by former President Trump in 2019. Here in San Antonio, many are coming together to do what they can for migrants in need. Humble to Serve Ministries, along with several other organizations, came together to bring food and clothes to anyone in need. We are keeping an eye on the biggest health care worker strike in U.S. history. More than 75,000 workers in eight states are picketing Kaiser Permanente. It is forcing the health care provider to limit elective and non-emergency procedures for patients. Meanwhile, U.S. auto workers have now been on strike for three weeks. U.S. regulators say General Motors should recall deadly airbag inflators that can shoot metal shrapnel into passengers during a crash. At least two people have been killed. The Wall Street Journal says at least 20 million GM vehicles have that part. Eleven other car companies use the inflators, including Ford, Volkswagen, Toyota, and Hyundai. ExxonMobil could soon close a mega deal to buy shale driller Pioneer. The Wall Street Journal says the takeover would reshape the U.S. oil industry and signal a wave of consolidation among shale companies. The $60 billion purchase would push Exxon deeper into West Texas. Environmentalists and lawmakers have been hoping oil and gas companies would invest more into green energy. Dick Buckets, the legendary Chicago Bears linebacker, has died at 80. His family says he died peacefully in his sleep at his home in Malibu, California. Buckets became a Bears legend and Pro Football Hall of Famer in his nine-year career, which started back in 1965. A new study found younger women have a tougher time getting promoted compared to men. The study found that for every 100 men promoted from entry level to manager, there were only 87 women and 73 women of color. Men also outnumber women at the manager level 60 to 40 percent. Sony says its movie streaming service is coming to PlayStation console. Users will be able to buy and rent movies through the Sony Pictures Core app, but Premium Plus and Deluxe subscribers can stream up to 100 ad-free films at no extra cost. From candy corn to Kit Kats, the most coveted treats might be tricks depending on the state. CandyStore.com released data based on its bulk candy sales to determine the favorite Halloween sweets in each state. Here in Texas, Sour Patch Kids came in first, followed by Reese's and Starburst. Halloween candy spending is expected to reach $3.6 billion this year. And that's today's 9 at 9. Oh, it's a rainy day needed in a big way. It's why so many business owners on Canyon Lake had been hoping for water levels. There have been at a record Ooh. low. Jonathan Cotto spoke with some of those owners about their wait for wet weather and to get an update on conditions at Canyon Lake. Thank God for uh, the heavy rain. Scott DeGrassi has lived at Canyon Lake for years. So I moved out here in 2012 when we were 12 feet low. And we did have a couple of 500 year rains uh, that winter and um, it filled up in one season. The business owner hoping for more rain in the forecast. Obviously an inch or two um, is, is not gonna reflect that much, uh, but we do need some, some heavy rainfall for, for a period of time. A prolonged drought causing water levels at the lake to reach a historic low. 2009 
uh, we were about 14 feet low, so we have now surpassed that at 18 feet. Once a boat is on the water, leaving the shoreline can be tricky. So as the waters recede a little bit, every time I put in the boat, I do see a few extra tree stumps that I hadn't seen before. I see a sandbar that I haven't seen before. The drought yeah. even exposing remnants of a city submerged. Some people have reported already seeing some tombstones. We're here at Party Cove at Canyon Lake, an area that really shows us how much the water level has dropped. If we take a look over here, you can see where the original water line used to be, and that's that darker area on the stone. That's about an 18 foot drop. But even then, there's about 30 to 40 feet of depth below us. The silver lining in all of this is it has revealed some of our beautiful landmarks. Landmarks like these underwater caves now exposed. And while there is plenty of beauty to be found, Degrassi says the rain is more than welcomed. Typically for this lake to fill up, we kind of need the rain on the north side of the lake an hour, two hours up. And so uh, hopefully we got some rain there as well. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, hopefully enough, at least to keep it from going down. Maybe it'll yeah. stop the... We don't want it any lower than Yeah, this. it may not go up much, but at least it won't go down. 909, 71 degrees. We'll be right back. Food is the biggest cultural diplomatic act you can do. Because when you gather around a table to eat, that's diplomacy. You start discussing and talking, and you start sharing. So I think that's a wonderful thing to do. Provecho. Gracias. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you make it, it's authentic. Authentic is something that's frozen in a time and space, and food isn't frozen in time and space. And for people who may not be familiar with our Mexican culture, what better way to introduce yourself than to taste our food? And not just the enchiladas, not just the tacos, which is great, but expand your horizon a little bit. It will be delicious. And the trick is not to overstuff your taco. Well, that's a debatable point. Well, I think but just so as long as you have plenty of napkins handy. Okay, I've got my napkin, I've got my tortilla, and being that it is Hispanic Heritage Month, let's talk lengua, shall we? Yes, lengua. Love these videos that Jesse is doing. So, to watch Jesse's full cooking lesson, just scan this QR code on your screen, it'll take you to the video on ksat.com. So tonight at 6, Jessie is going to debrief what she learned and why passing on the tradition of cooking cultural delicacies in La Casa is important. It's part of our effort to highlight Hispanic Heritage Month. You can find all these stories on ksat.com or, of course, on our YouTube page. Ooh, that looked good. Very, very good. The San Antonio Black International Film Festival celebrates its fifth year with unique films and workshops. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from St. Philip's College Watson Auditorium, where the films are gonna be screened, Tiff, and what's happening out there? A lot of excitement, and they're preparing for all the films that will be shown. More than 50 films were selected this year, and different stories from South Africa, Egypt, France, and we have two special people here this morning. We have Mia, one of the volunteers, and Selena, one of the filmmakers this year. Good morning to both of you. Mia, let's start with you. Tell me about how important this festival is for our community, and what should we expect this year? Uh, this is actually our fifth year doing the festival. Um, this year's theme is HBCU Love, and what we're doing is we're celebrating creators from historically black um, universities. Um, I think the importance of these films is just to kind of expose them, give them, the, give them the exposure they need, and also just to share um, all the black creatives and their, the work that they do. And Selena, tell me about your film. What is it all about? Thank you. My film is Noctiluca. It's a weird name, but it's Noctiluca. It means um, basically shining light in dark places. My film is about child abuse. Um, it is inspired by the Gabriel Fernandez story. You might have saw it on Netflix. And um, basically this child fell through all of the systems in America that we really shouldn't there's no child that should fall through these cracks. Um, and he fell through, unfortunately. And so I made a film that kind of exposes that and highlights the fact that this is happening to countless, hundreds of thousands of children each year in America. And um, we have to do better. And so my film challenges audiences to do 
better and what are we going to do as a community to help close this gap? A very important topic and how are you feeling being able to show this to an audience? Oh my goodness, I'm excited. Um, this film, because it's so hard, it could be, and it's very raw, <laughs> um, it could be a little triggering. So a lot of festivals have been like, I don't know, but I'm so thankful that Ada and her team have decided to show it anyway. They, they saw the poignancy, they saw that it needs to be spoken about and talked about and conversated about. So the fact that I get to show, share this with audiences so that they too can experience and be even challenged by it is is very honoring and exciting to me. A growing film community here in San Antonio. What have you seen throughout the years, Mia? Uh, throughout the years, we have been able to honor and celebrate um, black filmmakers from different um, genres. We've done animation. Um, we've, uh, of course, this year is HBCU, and every year we just try to choose a topic, a topic that's something that's important uh, so that the filmmakers can share and we give them a platform to expose them and expose their art to a larger audience. It's all about networking, connecting, and showcasing all these incredible films. Well, I'm excited to learn a little bit more, and we'll bring you that story coming up on the noon show. We'll send it back to you. All right, so informative and entertaining. Thank you much, Tiffany. Thank good you, luck. Tiff. Just got a good seat right there. She might just stay there and, you know, be right there in the front row. Yeah, great front row. Hey, we had front row seats to Ooh, a lot of rain. That's exactly what I was yeah. just yeah. going to say. We were positioned perfectly to see the rain show yesterday, and it was so needed. Did you go outside and stand in it? Just, I did, actually. I'm, I had my rain boots on. I came to work with my <laughs> rain like, jacket, just full-on embracing the rain outside. <laughs> it was kind of amazing. Yeah, we were so actually amazing. up in Bandera working on some stories for the eclipse and then talking about the prolonged drought that we've been in, how that could potentially affect fall foliage this year. And just driving up there, seeing all of the puddles and everything on all of that brown grass just made me really happy to see. Yeah. So yes, today is a lot quieter than what we saw yesterday, but here's a look at some of those estimated rainfall totals. Across South Central Texas, a good chunk of the area picking up on that rain. As we mentioned earlier in the newscast, close to an inch and a half officially here in San Antonio over at the airport. 1.46 up in Bernie. Check out Howlettsville out east in Lavaca County. An inch and three quarters. Definitely needed rain there as well. And for us here in Bear County, anywhere between, let's say, half of an inch to an inch and a half recorded, close to an inch in Adkins, 1.1 over there in shirts. And of course, this is not going to be drought busting, but it definitely will help any little bit that we can gather out there in the rain gauge, helping with the existing drought that we still have in place across the majority of the area. Again, it gets a little bit better the farther west that you go closer to the Rio Grande, but for us here in in Bear County stretching up 281 and even at the I-35 corridor we still have that exceptional drought which is the worst drought category that is in place. Something else that we didn't do yesterday for the first time in 119 days since early June we did not hit 90 degrees. We topped off in the low 80s thanks to the rain and cloud cover here in San Antonio. This is actually the longest consecutive stretch of 90 degree plus days that we have on record here in town. So we have ended that, thank goodness. And we are not expected to reach 90 today. It is still going to be somewhat warm, but actually pretty seasonable for this time of year. Our average high is in the mid 80s. That's where we are expected to top off later this Friday afternoon. Then we see a secondary push of cooler air work in just in time for the weekend. And that fall weather is going to arrive for any weekend plans. Check this out, maybe not even climbing out of the mid to upper 70s for your Saturday into Sunday before we start to warm things up a little bit more as we head into next week. So let's enjoy it right now, though, 73 degrees dew point still in the mid 60s. We are going to start to see some drier air move in later this afternoon and especially into the evening, though. But of course, those highs still headed for the mid 80s, 80 degrees by lunchtime. I think throughout the day we'll see a mix of sun and clouds. There's that forecast high around 86 at about four to five o'clock. And then if you're stepping out for any evening plans, we'll slowly start start to see those thermometers fall into the 70s shortly after the sun goes down. 87 in Floresville, 85 up in Canyon Lake. The forecast high later this afternoon, 82 in Kerrville, 83 in Comfort. And I mentioned those dew points dropping. It's going to start to feel more comfortable out there, especially later on this evening and even more so as we head into the weekend. That secondary push of cooler air, all thanks to this front that's currently up in North Texas. That's going to continue to slide its way 
farther southward, weakening as it does so, but it will start to feel a little bit better around here, especially as we head into your Saturday and Sunday. 76 tomorrow. Also tomorrow it could be a little breezy at times. Some wind gusts generally upwards of about 25 to maybe even 30 miles per hour possible in the morning. And then Sunday morning, because of that drier air, and if we start to see skies clear a little bit more, upper 50s is possible. And if that verifies, we've got a forecast low around 57. That would be the coolest morning that we've seen here in town since April 30th. So I know a lot of people excited about that. And then we'll start to warm up into next week. So definitely enjoy it. It's arriving just in time for any weekend plans. So that means in the hill country, it could get into the low 50s the mid 50s. It's possible. I know higher elevations, they always drop a few more degrees than us here in yeah. town. So we're going to have a nice weekend. Yes. Nice. Nice-ish week. At least it's not going to be crazy hot. Exactly. And then another nice-ish weekend. Yeah, it's looking like we could see another front move in ahead of next weekend, which could bring with it another rain chance. And then hopefully if it pans out like it's looking right now, we see those skies clear just in time for the eclipse that's happening on the 14th. Amazing. Thank you, Mia. Of course. <laughs> Nice-ish. Nice-ish. It's a new word for the weather. There you go. First of its kind event coming to the south side, and it's called Vinos y Tacos. You know it's good already. Yeah. Can't be bad. This event will feature everything from Mexican wines, Ooh. tacos, and charcuterie classes. Ooh. People travel to the Hill Country in California, right, for these wine and nature experiences, and they'll get to experience that here on the south side of San Antonio. So Vinos y Tacos will happen tomorrow from 2 in the afternoon until 6 in the evening at Mitchell Lake Center. That's on the south side. The event is 21 and up, no children allowed. You can learn more about this event by heading to our website, ksat.com. And hey, we'll be right back. Time and temp. It's 923. It's 73 degrees. <laughs> Sorry, David. Hey, did you know spooky season is here? <laughs> Apparently so. There's a lot of things to do. Some of our GMSA producers <laughs> took a short drive to Castroville to explore Ooh. Bell Creek Acres. It wasn't quite as spooky as it sounds. It's it, really not. It just looks cute. They had so, so much fun. Check it out. We just want people to be able to bring their families and come out here and have a really good time. There's something for everyone. <laughs> Said, this doesn't look scary, it just looks cute. It looks like cute fun. Looks like Haley's having a lot of fun back there in the background. Like, oh my goodness. This looks super was cute. That Joy in the tube? No, I think that was Haley. Was that Haley in the tube. They're both they're both short. So there but look, I want to be on the tractor yeah, train. Haley, yeah, super you know. cute. So as you can fun. see, our producers had a great time. You can check out Bell Creek Acres in Castroville from thousands of pumpkins to hay rides through the forest around the Medina River. And you get to pet some animals, or as the grandkids like to say, animals. Oh, <laughs> we'll share animals. more of our producers' adventures there next week on GMSA. We have all that information about how you can check it out on our website. I think get off to go have so much fun. I know. We are excited about the eclipse, Mia. <laughs> we are so excited about the eclipse. In fact, we are only eight days away from the annular solar eclipse that's happening on Saturday, October 14th. The peak of it around 11.50, 11.52 here in San Antonio. It's the ring of fire. Everybody's getting excited, getting their glasses. And David, what did so you and been, Sarah You've been Sarah talking do? about how important glasses are. You, they you are. cannot see this without some sort of eye protection. Yes, so you, that's important. So you've been talking about all the glasses, and then Sarah Spive and I went over to uh, elementary school earlier this week, we talked to third graders, and we built our own out of a cereal box. Okay, show us how it works. So it, it's a cereal box, and you got to do some cutting and all this stuff. If you go to YouTube, you can see how Sarah and I 
built this this um, I don't even know what you call it just mm -hmm. a, a visual an eclipse button. viewer so but you you have to have the like the eclipse will happen back up here so you look through here and it'll come through this yeah, little pinhole right there so it. like I can't see that because it's not bright enough but I can see the light that's up there y'all should have I hope see? that y'all watched on Wednesday because whenever the sun came out behind the, the clouds right and the kids face. were able to see the sun they were so excited they like were, it was it was the most genuine excitement they are I've cool ever seen. it does work it looks weird but it works so eat some cereal and make some eye protection. Here's your excuse to clean out the cereal in your pantry. You we'll be right back. All right, Dave, we got football weather yeah, we finally. Do. And of course, the Spurs Ooh. are back on the court for the first time in front of all the fans ready this to go. Is, here. This is amazing. Like they just had media day on Monday mm -hmm. and tomorrow it's going to be a chance for the fans. All you folks who've been wanting to see <laughs> Wimbenyama in a jersey like up close mm -hmm. and personal. You can go to the uh, AT&T Center for the big scrimmage. Yes, tomorrow. well, the, the, the Frost Bank Center now. I'm sorry. Don't remember, we're calling oh, this the bank. No. Calling it the bank now. Wow. <laughs> Somebody, I, Look, wow. I know the Spurs Oops. pay attention to these things. They watch these things. I've been told that. So Frost I Bank <laughs> Center. Go to the Frost yes, Bank Center. Yes. That's where um, it's going to be at tomorrow. Where the Frost <laughs> Bank Center? Oh, man. The bank. The where? bank the for bank. sure. Where? The bank. The Frost um, Bank Center. Sarah. So, guys, this was a free event. And now... Here's the thing. You had to have registered oh. to get tickets. I just checked with the Spurs, and unfortunately, all the tickets have already what? been awarded. Really? So, yes. But everything else, free parking, first come, first serve. They're going to have discounts on all the drinks and foods and all that fun stuff. So, so it's going to be a lot of fun out there so that's the, at so, the bank. <laughs> so here's the, here's the thing. If you can't make it to the Frost Bank Center tomorrow, you didn't get a ticket, we know that Mary is going to have all the highlights yes. from the scrimmage from the Frost Bank mm -hmm. Center coming up tomorrow night on yeah. Night V. Yeah. Along so, with a bunch of college fun, football. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh. It's going to be a fun sort of intra-squad scrimmage. Yeah, Silver versus black. They're going to separate the team into two different teams. It's going to be a lot of fun out there and just a great atmosphere for the fans. There's a lot of questions going into training camp, especially for some specific players. Like, yeah. where is Wimby going to play? Is he going to, is he going to be a big forward, a center, a small? Mm -hmm. I mean, the guy can play four or five positions. So can Jeremy Sohan. Jeremy so, Sohan, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how far they've come and kind of like what kind of pop uh, – Combinations Pop has come up yeah. with to, to put on the court. Yeah, absolutely. Should be a lot of fun out right. there. First look at our silver and black, the San Antonio Spurs. FD. Frost Bank Center. <laughs> I'm not messing that up again this entire The season. bank. All right. Well, before we tip right. things off at the bank, wow, this, uh, is, this is going to be right a lot of fun up in Dallas, David. The Red River rivalry, rivalry. matchup. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, Texas versus Oklahoma. Yeah, it used to be called Showdown. Yeah, everything. Yeah, everybody, all sorts yeah, of different things. Four or five yeah. different names. Yeah, keep up. All right. All so we know we go, is baby. it's Oklahoma against mm -hmm. UT, and that is always huge. And this Saturday, tomorrow morning at 11 a.m., you can watch the game live right here at KSA 12. The interesting thing about this game is Texas, except for I think one game this season, they get off to slow starts. Yeah. And they end up having to do a lot of work in the fourth quarter. And I don't know if they can get off to a slow start against Oklahoma, which can put a lot of points upon the board, like mm -hmm. Texas can. So I think Texas is going to have to come out a little more aggressive and score yeah. a few more points early on in this game. I don't know if they can score 21 in the fourth and beat Oklahoma, but. No, definitely they don't want to get behind. Yeah. Uh, both teams are undefeated. Both teams in, ranked in the top 12. I believe Oklahoma is uh, 12. Texas right now is like in third in yeah. the CFP. So, uh, yeah, this has a lot of stakes on it. It always does. Uh, Texas right now is a five-point favorite. But, yeah, uh, David, this game on this neutral side at the Cotton Bowl, the way they split, the always way they fun. split it always down the fun. middle. Always a great, what always a, scene. a great time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. love that. Amazing. Scene. And plus, of course, these two teams are both going to the SEC next year, so yeah. this thing will continue. So this is not going to be the. Mm -hmm. I would, I would hope it wouldn't be the last game of this one. This is a great robbery yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. You can expect to see this one for a lot of times. But Texas has got to get off to a fast start tomorrow. All right, here's yes. another great one tomorrow. Yes. Alabama is coming to Texas to mm -hmm. take on A&M and College Station. Here, let's hear it. Come on. <laughs> there we there go. We go. We Mia, one. Mia's fighting Texas Ags yeah. right there. <laughs> There we go. So this is going to be a very interesting game because a and coming off some pretty good wins. a and has got some momentum. I mean, yeah. there were some, some commentators even talking about the West is kind of open mm -hmm. and A&M may just sneak in mm -hmm. there and win the West the way they've been playing the last couple of weeks. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So they took care of Arkansas. They've already beaten Auburn. Alabama, yeah. of course, coming off of a couple of big wins. Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and uh, Alabama right now one-point favorite on the road out there in Kyle Field. And remember, two years ago, I believe it was, when A&M had that crazy win over Alabama. 
time. I think Zach Galzada was the starting yeah, quarterback somebody. for the Aggies at the time. Uh, Max Johnson now the starter for Texas A&M. This is going to be a lot of fun. I mean, you, back to back UT, OU, and then Bama, yeah. A&M. How do you leave your couch, hey, David? Me a couch or <laughs> there? I'll be here. Oh, you'll be oh. here. Why? Oh, so you'll be here working. Oh, we'll still be cheering. Yeah, it's going to be a really nice yeah. weather day, yeah. so yes. you can concentrate on. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. We got to figure it out. Yeah, All that's right. going to be okay. a lot of fun. Uh, 2.30 kickoff there out there in College Station for that one. Uh, David, we also want to mention UTSA. Yep. All right, they're on the road, David. Take they, got it on the game, they got the week off last week. They got the week so off. So hopefully Frank Harris has healed somewhat. This, yes. This kid's never he's gonna, this kid going to quit football and take him three years to heal. But hopefully he's healed mm -hmm. where he can come out and play. That's why they didn't play him last week. Yeah. So uh, this is their opening game in the AAC That's right. conference. Yep. So uh, against Temple, Temple's not the best team in the country. Mm -hmm. So they got a uh, they got a really good chance, although it is on the road. At it Temple. is on the road. So they're going to be playing at the uh, home of the Philadelphia Eagles, Lincoln Financial Field. That's going to be a pretty cool experience Ooh. there for those guys, yeah. UTSA's players. But uh, as you mentioned, David, Frank Harris has missed the previous two games. They were off last week. So basically he's had like a whole month so. to get ready. And Coach Trailer has been saying, you know what, just wait for us to get healthy and wait for us to get into conference play. So this is it. We got to do it now. I think he said uh, last couple of years, I think only one year they had a winning record going into mm -hmm. into conference. Yeah. And usually they have a losing record, but then they perform in conference. So that's yeah. this is when it counts right now. So this uh, tomorrow they'll get things started in conference play. First time in this in this conference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's good see stuff what Frank there. Harris can do. Hopefully he Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. All right, Dave, we're moving Whoa, from college to the pros, and here we go. I mean, you talk about this is just an amazing weekend of football matchups. Cowboys, Niners, David, doesn't get any better. So it's Cowboys and Niners, it's Purdy, McCaffrey, and it's uh, Dak and Pollard and CD. Pick one and um, Micah. I think it's more like the defense than the offense for the Cowboys. We ought to be talking Van Der Esch and, yeah, and yeah. Micah Parsons and these guys on the defense because mm -hmm. they had a couple of turnovers last week that yep. were big in that win they had last week. And, and man, the 49ers are on a roll. I, yeah. Even Jerry Jones has said the trip to the Super Bowl goes through the 49ers. Well, look, the 49ers are undefeated. So. You just mentioned right there the matchup. Christian McCaffrey had like four Three, touchdowns last four. week. He has been on fire right now for the 49ers. They have such a interesting offense they mix in several guys Debo Samuel has given the Cowboys fits over the years but David I will say I think this is going to come down to your guy sometimes your guy Dak Prescott don't put Can it on Dak Dak. It don't put it on Dak <laughs> can he get it done I well we're we'll gonna need see. for him to get it done you know the thing is he's he talked about in the offseason how he's going to throw fewer interceptions although the one interception he did have in the game was like a huge turnover in the end zone against the Cardinals so that one just kind of stunk but he has improved a lot in his yeah. passing. His percentage is, is going up. The yards are going up. They've shortened up the, the offense for him. They have. They, they've kind of yeah. tightened up the receivers. They don't go on those deep balls all the time. So he's found some, uh, some shorter routes and let those uh, athletes mm -hmm. go out there and get one-on-one -on -one with some thing. of the defenders and yeah. see what they can do. they got to figure out a way to, to slow down Brock Purdy. This guy is yeah, something else, He's been else, doing great. Yeah. Arm and legs. Mm -hmm. He's Absolutely. got, he's got yeah. all the skills, can read defenses. He's got all that going yeah. for him. And then Christian McCaffrey. Would, <laughs> he's been unbelievable. You know, so um, look, this is going to be good, a good matchup with their offense and the be. Cowboys defense. Absolutely, yeah. So just remember the 49ers have knocked the Cowboys out of the playoffs oh, for two straight years. Stop. So I think the Stop. Cowboys looking for some redemption Stop. here. It's in San Francisco, yes, though. Yes, it is. It is there. It's out in the Bay Area. Okay, yeah. David, uh, Texans now. Uh, you know what? Look at the Texans. Two straight wins. They're 2-2 two and two in the season. People thinking maybe they may win this I, division now, the AFC I, South. <laughs> yeah, I, you don't want to talk playoffs too early with this team, mm -hmm. but the way C.J. Stroud has been yeah, playing, they look I don't think – I didn't look. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I don't think he has an interception yet this year, does he? Ooh, good question. He, he if he did, it was the first game against I don't, Baltimore. I don't – Yeah, I, I think that's been the worst He's gone like a long stretch without yeah. one. And then – this dude right there. Yeah, Collins. Yeah, they. Stroud, uh, Collins Stroud has been great. The defense Nelson. has been great. Um, yeah, I, I'm just. This is a fun young team. I think people in Houston are really excited about the Texans this year. And again, yeah. this division is open right now. Look at that. Yeah. That's a crazy. Uh, and I think one of the one of the yeah. surprise units on that team maybe the offensive line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
because CJ Stroud's not getting hit a lot. Yeah, he looks great so and far. Like, and he does not look like a first-year rookie. No, definitely not. He does not. not look like definitely not. he's out there for the first yeah. time. He looks like he's uh, he's been there for a while. So they, they, did, a, they um, did a fantastic job picking him in the draft. So that would be the Texans taking on the Atlanta Falcons. They're on the road. So it will be interesting to see if Houston can continue this little winning streak here. So, man, David, that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of that, – that's, <laughs> I'm parked on the weekend. I don't know where I'm going to be. Where are you going to be? I'm going to be on the couch also. Yeah. 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 Snacking a lot of stuff going on. and watching football. All right, live cam. Good way to do it. And you know what, me? I'm sorry to say, I might look out the window every now and then to see what it's doing, but I, I'm not gonna be outside a lot on the weekend. I'm sorry. I understand. Sorry. Honestly, I'm hoping maybe a lot of people will go outside and maybe watch it on the patio. All of the awesome oh, we football can do that games because yeah. it's just gonna feel like That's football weather. Ooh, it's gonna okay. be really nice out there this weekend. But before we can get there, unfortunately, today's pollen count. Not looking so nice following yesterday's rain. Molds have actually jumped into the very high category this Friday. Ragweed is moderate. Fall elm and pigweed are low. A look at temperatures, upper 60s, low 70s in and around the San Antonio area right now. We are on our way to the mid 80s later on this afternoon. At least it's not the 90s. And again, this weekend, as we see that second push of cooler air, Highs are expected to be in the 70s. And speaking of football, here's your Friday night football forecast. A little bit cooler, partly cloudy skies. It could be breezy at times with some wind gusts out of the north upwards of about 20 miles per hour, 80 degrees at kickoff. And then as we head into about halftime, those temperatures will start to fall into the 70s with dropping humidity. We'll get you another look at that awesome weekend forecast, plus some KSAT Connect photos of area rain gauges following the rain yesterday. Coming up in just a few, guys. Before we head out for a quick break, just taking a look outside with TransGuide. Looks like traffic is moving pretty well throughout the morning. A lot of people on the roads this Friday morning. Maybe everyone wants to get out in the box. The weather is so beautiful. Hey, if we see any incidents, we will let you know about them. We'll be right back. Ooh, zoo cam. My. Uh, where are we going? Oh, oh my oh. gosh, lots wow, of activity. The They're all out today. It's because the weather. They said, oh yeah. my gosh, usually when we take the shot, they're like in the water or on that, mm -hmm. that little like tree shadow because it's so hot. Their little feet are like hot, 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 hot. But right now, <laughs> you know when you're like, you're barefoot. Have you ever asked a lady go, well, that's why they only stand on one leg because the other one won't get burned. Yeah, so they, they won't get burned, these guys have been doing it for a while. They know better than us. They're enjoying the cool. They probably enjoyed the rain yesterday. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. So, and, and so let me ask you a question. How good was the rain? How good is this weather for a particular butterfly? The monarchs. I'm, is it good? They're so beautiful. They're beautiful. Is it, is it the season for the monarch butterfly? It, it is the migrating season okay. for the migrating monarch. They are migrating right now from Canada. They stop oh. here. We're like the Buckies, okay? They stop <laughs> in San Bucky. Antonio. For the Buckies. They I fill up. It. We got nice restrooms. We got <laughs> lots of things to eat. And hey, you can enjoy and celebrate the monarch migration. Tomorrow, they're having a free family friendly monarch butterfly and pollinator festival. It is at Brackenridge Park tomorrow. It is free from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So we need the rain so the plants will grow so the monarch butterflies can pollinate. Right, and so one Do I have of the, that right? Yes, good wow. job, David. Yeah, that was good. So one of the main concerns for scientists was, okay, the monarchs aren't gonna have a lot of things to yeah. eat because we've been in this severe drought. Um, you know, not just here in San Antonio, yeah. but a, a lot of areas across the Southwest. And, um, but, there are other studies saying, hey, the monarchs are maybe, they're doing better, but the migrating population is having a hard time. That was in my garden, by the way. And I provide a lot of, I am a Bucky's at I my garden. I believe that wholeheartedly. You are, you are the monarch Bucky, you're the I, big one? I'm one of the big ones. The big Bucky's? Yeah, I got like lots of gas stations. On, like, the, on the map, like when you can recommend like a place to go, and it's, it's a coastal's backyard. Do, they yeah. have, do you have beaver nuggets? Well, their version of beaver nuggets are the Greg's Mist Flower that I put out and all the different Amazing. varieties of pollinator. Awesome. Uh, but hey, tomorrow's event's really cool. They have all kinds. They have a pollinator procession, which is a, it's. <laughs> I love the alliteration. It's, it's, it's a, uh, yeah, like the little kids and, the, you know, they put uh, on the costumes okay. and they dance and they have obstacle courses and you can be part of the, um, the tagging, the monarch tagging. So they have lots of cool things. Brackenridge Park, it's free and it's going to be The beautiful. weather is going to be stunning for this. So yes, if you have any outdoor weekend plans, 
definitely keep them and embrace the fall like air that's headed our direction all following the front that we saw yesterday. I think David, you said this yesterday. That was phase one right. was the rain. And then wow. phase two is the cooler air that's going to get in for this weekend. Take a look at some of the KSAT connect photos that we got in of area rain wow. gauges. This is from the Alamo Ranch slash Valley Ranch neighborhood. Almost two inches of rain just under an inch over in Jordanton out there in Atascosa County. Here is Live Oak close to two inches there as well. And then Canyon Lake, as we were talking about earlier, definitely needing the rainfall just over an inch reported there. Love to see these KSAT Connect photos of needed rainfall falling here in South Central Texas. Again, as we look ahead to the remainder of this Friday, it's still going to be warm with highs topping off in the mid 80s by about four to five o'clock, a mix of sun and clouds, and then we'll slowly start to see those thermometers fall into the 70s after the sun goes down, dew points start to drop. Friday evening plans going to feel pretty good out there. And then this weekend is just going to be absolutely beautiful. So here are your forecast highs across South Central Texas later on today. 85 in Gonzales, 86 in Pleasanton, 85 in Catula, 84 over there in Uvalde. Then we do see that cooler air work in tomorrow and into Sunday. Highs are expected to stay in the 70s. So that's actually below average for this time of year and then we'll start to see those daytime highs climb up gradually warm into next week before another front tries to work in by Thursday night and Friday of next week. So about a week away from that. Here is that front though up to our north right now that is expected to push some of that drier and cooler air into the region just ahead of the upcoming weekend. You can see behind it. Check out these temperatures right now. 45 in Minneapolis. It's 40 right now in Bismarck, North Dakota, upper 30s over in Casper, Wyoming. Not going to get that cold for us here locally, but some mornings in the upper 50 is certainly possible as early as Sunday. After we do see that boundary move through this evening overnight and into the first half of the day tomorrow, it is probably going to get pretty breezy at times. I think some wind gusts out of the north upwards of about 25 to even 30 miles per hour possible, just ushering in that fall like weather. So we'll monitor that, especially for your Saturday into Sunday. If that 57 verifies, that will be the coolest morning that we have seen since late April. So that is awesome. Still feeling good into Monday throughout the day on Monday. That's when we're going to start to see some of the humidity work back in and the humidity also really affects those morning lows. So those will also be on the warming trend into next week. But until then, it is just going to be amazing this weekend. Please enjoy it and get outside. We'll be right back after the break. Let's take a look outside with Transguide. Hey, we haven't had a lot of backups or issues this morning. We do see a lot of people out and about, probably traveling today, enjoying yeah. this beautiful weather that we have been gifted with that I think that we deserve, Mia. I certainly think so. After this summer that we had, the September that we had, we're excited about it. Very excited. David? I'm pumped. David, it's football season. It's going to be great. Can't wait till kickoff tonight. That's going to be fun. You're going to what game this weekend? Baylor, Texas Tech. Where is it? It's in Waco. You're going to Waco. It'll be a little chilly in Waco, maybe. That'd be kind of fun. Is Tech going to win? I'd be, I'd be better. Hey, y'all have a great weekend. Hey, be back here for the noon.